G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my live video. If you're watching the replay, give me the thumbs up and just put a comment down below. If you're watching the live, enjoy the show. This is going to be a video, how to blend your acrylic paints. I need to get a couple of links up so as uh, people in the other platforms can view this video as well. So bear with me a moment and I'll try and do a quick sound check as well just to make sure that uh, the sound is working. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, why didn't that work there? Okay, let me go here. So how's everyone been? I've got everything set up here. Hopefully I have. Now I've just got to do a quick sound check and just see how we're going here. I'm going to wait for the ads to finish. So just let me speak over that so I can hear my voice, nothing just else. Let me speak over that so I can hear my voice. Okay, beautiful. I've muted it. So now, now only subscribers can comment in this live chat. So if you're not a subscriber and you want to say hello and where you're from, you just need to subscribe. It keeps those spamming, scamming rat bags out of the chat that just come in and want to write some snot. So, okay, uh, we've got 15, 17 people, 15 people watching. So, and if you're a member, you get big shout outs in these live shows as well. So this is how to blend your acrylic paints. I've noticed through social media, a lot of beginners are having trouble. How do I blend acrylic paints? Everybody paints different. So I can only show you how I'm going to blend and how I do blend my acrylic paints. I only paint in acrylic, so I can only show you how I blend my acrylic paints. And I use different things. It's, it depends on your brush, your surface. Different canvas surfaces will give you different effects. Some beautiful, soft-looking blending. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a <coughs> blocked-up throat. I need some water. And some scratchy ones. So it depends on your surface, depends on your brushes. and your paints okay so there's a few things that depend on can someone just say something in the chat so as i can just make sure that the um chat is working because i don't see anything in there as yet so if someone can just say a quick hello in the chat bar there um where are we we've got i've got to turn that light out so what what i do I prep this canvas is um, canvas cloth. It's Frederick's canvas. It's already gesso primed. It's already primed from the shop. I don't need to go and gesso prime that again. I tell people because people say, "Should I gesso my primed canvas?" If you're, let's say, you've grabbed a board of wood and you think, "I want to put one of my paintings on that," that's raw. It's got nothing on it. That's when you grab your gesso, you prime that up in your gesso, then it's ready to take your acrylic paint just like this artist quality canvas is ready to take it. So I don't need to gesso prime that, okay? Thank you very much there to those people watching from California and Loney and um, Charithi. Good to have you here. All right, so I use, well, the actual one I use is Global, but you can buy these big bottles from your art shop. It's like a, I just call it craft paint, but I don't know what it's actually called. This on the bottle says fine art student acrylic impasto. It's a soft bodied acrylic paint. It's titanium white. And I use that with my retarder. Now, those people who don't know what a retarder is, this retards the drying time of your acrylic paints, meaning it slows them down, it pulls them back. That's what the word retard means, to slow down, okay? So that'll keep your acrylic paint wet longer. Now, what I do, I only use that with this. I'm going to show you in this video, but I need to get these explanations out there so you can watch this video a couple of times and understand the science behind how Ianapolis does his acrylic blending. Everyone blends different, all right? We're all different and unique people, so there's so many different ways. And like I said, I can only show you my way. So that's what we need. We need our colours <clears throat> I'm trying to work out because I'm just going off the fly here what to blend. So I'm just going to do some kind of a sky with different colours in it to show you how I blend them. 
and then how we can blend some clouds into those skies showing you what brushes i use now i use these are my go-to brushes two blending brushes one and a half inch and a two inch and me putter on a brush if you want those simply message me on facebook they're 45 us dollars and that gets them to you wherever you live in the world okay and um, i did have someone saying they put her on a brush didn't last very long just as an example i've been using this one for several years now they do last long but if you're really really not looking after them i don't know why it's not lasting you that long i wash it out after every use and they can last but it's up to the individual now we're going to get started so what i'll do i'm going to bring the camera over here so you can get up to my um easel a lot closer Got Barry Radburn and Scott Cinnamon in the chat. Big members of mine. Good to have my members here. All members get shout outs in my lives, okay? Everyone else, a big hello to everybody else in there. So Barry Radburn and Scott Cinnamon, good to have you on board. All right, so I'm just going to paint a sky. I've got me waters there. I've got me spectacles there for when I need them. So let's bring you over here and hopefully my battery will last <clears throat> so there we go good to see you ian good to good to sad all right so that's me canvas i've pretty much got myself a horizon line and some mid-ground land mass there i've got some water so what i'm just trying to do in this painting for the blending sake is how i blend the sky how I blend the water and the ground going into the water. So there's blending in water as well. And not everything needs this in it. I'm mainly putting that, I'm sorry if I'm taking too long to get paint on the canvas, but bear with me, it's a tutorial. I put this onto the canvas and then my colors that I'm blending, they don't have the retarder in it. Uh, only this stuff for the base. So what I'll do, let's get started. Let's hope we've got enough in the bottle here. And if you're a member and you want to say hello and you want a big shout out, just say hello in the chat there and I'll give you a big shout out. Uh, if you're not a member, you're watching on a desktop, simply hit the join button below and become a member and get the perks. All right, I'll put that over there. Now I'm going to grab some retarder. There's different retarders. There's a milky one. This one looks like baby oil. That's the one I use. Better the devil you know than the one you don't. I'm just used to using this one. So I'm going to put that over the side there. <clears throat> I'll get my coffee out of the way. Oh, yeah, I love that. Now, let me put my brushes down what I use to blend. I'll get these out of the way. I've got a few for backups here because we're live. So there's me brushes. I've got me blending brushes and me putter on a brush. So let's say I'm doing the sky, I'm doing the ocean. Uh, what am I going to do? This That's why I call it a putter on a brush because that gets the paint onto the canvas and these start blending. So how the guru blends. We grab this putter on a brush. If you don't have this, find something in your hardware store. But if you can't, simply message me and I'll send you some out. So I'm mixing this up into the soft bodied titanium white with the retarder. I've got it on both sides of the brush. Now, I'm, I've used this so many times, so I'm pretty well familiar how it works. I feel I need a bit more in there, not too much. Don't overdo it. Practice mixing this if you're gonna use it and work out what climate you're in, how much to mix, how much retarder to put in with your paint. So I've given that a good, jolly mix just like that all right now let me turn this light on uh i've got a i've got a normally i do this in editing uh but this is live i'll turn that one on and this one off okay so how are we going there can you see that all right Okay, there's my canvas. So to watch, I'll turn that light off. It's a bit dark. That's a bit better. All right. <clears throat> so I've got me 
paint. Now, I'll start with the sky first and then we'll go to the water. So what I do, I put this on because if I just put blue paint onto this dry canvas, it's going to be very chalky and very hard to blend. But this helps make the blending achievable. So I'm going to just simply get this all on the sky half of the painting. I can go all the way down and paint the whole lot, but I might not have enough time. So I'm just doing half at a time. With oil artists, you might see them paint the whole canvas first because those oil paints stay wet a lot longer. They stay wet for days and weeks, sometimes months. So I've got that on there. Look how I've put that on there. It's quite thick, gluggy, and brush strokey. All right, so what I'll do, I'll go to the tip of this brush and I stroke it left and right and get it to an even thin film. Nothing too thick, but see, I've still got lines here. It's important just to practice and blend them out, stroke them out. I'm stroking them out like a pure gentleman. Okay, now I need to clean this brush to get my colours on there. So let's go around here. All the way over there, you can see my mess. This is the other half of my studio. Uh, I'm just going to wipe the bulk off the brush. I wipe the bulk off the brush. I've got my flapper bin there. I'll close the bathroom door. I'll just give this a rinse. So certain times you need to wash your brush and certain times you can just wipe it. But because I'm doing several different colours in the sky, I'm choosing to wash this. I'm going to give it a severe flogging. And then I just dab it in my towel. I dab it in between because I'm a bit scared cats are left hair on there. All right, let's go back to the canvas. Oh, my son, Reese Harris. Yeah, he looks at me as a father figure. Oh, I look like his father too. Wow, that's amazing. Golly, how you going, Reese? My son, Reese, he's the man. He is the man. He's a man of many talents. People think I've got many talents. You want to check out Reese. All right, so we've got our sky area. What do we want to do? Let's just grab down here onto the palette. I'm, I might sound a bit rushed, but because I'm not sure how long my battery's going to last. I have charged it up. Now, I've got yellow ochre. I've got quinacridone magenta, and I'll grab some blue. Let's what Where'd my blue go? Oh, here it is over here. Um, I've just got my cerulean blue. Now, we've got our three primary colours there. Um, so what I'll do is we'll get some of this yellow ochre, yellow oxide, yellow ochre, and it doesn't seem, where did I put that tube? It doesn't seem to be enough. I haven't painted live for over a year. It's quite stressful painting live. <laughs> Everything's got to line up. Barry Radburn. G'day, Barry's in the chat there still. Reese and Barry talk. Reese is my moderator. He's my son. Now, watch how I blend this colour into my sky. It's going across the horizon line. I'm just going to put it there and push it in. I'm going to the tip of this brush and I'm going to start pushing it up into the sky, just like that. It's a dusky colour. Beautiful. Look at that. Just yellow ochre over that white. Now, look at it. I feel, all right, I want a few heavier bands. So this is how you blend the acrylics. You can stamp the same colour on. Watch this. Stamp it on, mainly down the bottom because that's where the heaviness is. And then wipe it, of course, and then lightly brush that in. See how we've got some, get rid of that white again. There we go. See how we've got some darker bands in that colour there. I just want some of this up here. There we go. Now I need to, uh, I'm just going to quickly wipe that brush. So just talk amongst yourselves. I don't have to keep moving the camera backwards and forwards. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, give that a flogging. Now I'm going to pick up the magenta. Okay, so I'm picking this up in the putter on a brush. Now see, learn how to load a brush as well. It's important. I'm loading it right on the edge 
right on the corners and the edge of that because that's what's going to hit the canvas. I don't need it all the way up here. Paddy Miner, g'day, Paddy Miner. This is another member of mine and from Oklahoma City. Okay, so now I want to get this on to there like that. Uh, I've got the wrong colour here, not to worry. I'm just blending. So I'm pushing it on, pushing it on. Now see where it's meeting the, uh, the yellow oxide. I'll go to the tip of the brush because not much paints on the tip of the brush, if you can notice there. And I'm going to do some infinity strokes and just crisscross that into the yellow. Just crisscross it and then pull it straight. Now pick up your blending brush. This is how I blend. And see weird colours there. I don't know why I put that colour there. Um, we're going to I, I stamp it, dab it, and twist it. Okay, and I'm blending those two colours together. I'm going to blend some clouds into this to really break it up. So hopefully the blue will bring this home a bit better. Now, that's been brushed on. You, you, there's no brush marks in it. If I stamp it like that, I can even soften it a bit more. But I'm not going to do that to the whole lot because I want to get on to the next bit. Okay, that's how those two colours are easily blended together. Now, if you see a bit of white glare there, which I'm seeing, I'm just going to pick up some of that colour in my blending brush, stamp it on there, grab yourself your cloth, your kitchen towel. Always need a cloth or a kitchen towel when you're blending to wipe the build-up off your brush. So I'll use a Chuck's Kitchen Wipe, just wipe that. And see there, I'm just going to dance it control how much I'm blending that in and hopefully when I look into the monitor that white glare that was there is kind of gone that'll do that'll do that'll do <clears throat> now I'm going to grab I'll grab another putter on a brush because I want my blue I can't get over why I put magenta in the sky not to worry Pick up this colour blue. We'll start at the top. This is going to mix with that and make a deeper sky colour, hopefully. Start at the top. Push it on. Now I'm going to just push those two infinity strokes with that brush, that same putter on a brush. Oh, that big air there coming out of it. Lots of brushes, cheap brushes, expensive brushes. They all shed their hair. So if your brush sheds its hair, don't panic. It's just something they do. It's like us as humans. We're such a scientific, complicated human being, but we sneeze. Same thing. Get this blue on there. So I'm pushing that across with my putter on a brush. Now I'll do some infinity strokes to join it up with that magenta. Go to the tip of it. And now I'll stroke them both together like that. We've pretty much made some kind of rainbow colour. But that's how I blend in acrylic. Now what we can do, I need it a bit darker up there because of the colours. So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to wipe that brush. Uh, what am I going to do? Oh, yeah, that's right. I want the... Where are we? Um, dioxine. Is it dioxine purple? Uh, where is all my colours? I'll use the phalo blue. Hopefully that's dark enough. I've just got some... Oh, is that a hard night? I don't know. Just got some phalo blue. That's dark. I'll pick up some of that onto my putter on a brush. Just trying to get the top blue a lot darker. So watch this. I'll stamp it on in the corners. Stamp it on, dribble it across the roof of the sky there. Same over this side. I've loaded that side of the brush up, so I stamp it on. I'm controlling where I want these darker values. I'm not just rubbing it in and hoping for the best because I could grind it down to the white. Let's get that up there somewhere bit over there. Okay, I'll give that a slight wipe so there's no build-up on there. 
and now I want to just push that across the blue sky color. So, so far, I've done all this blending with the putter on a brush, bar that little bit there, but I still could have done that with the putter on a brush. Now, I'm just touching it. It depends on your weight. I'm not very heavy. I'm controlling it, controlling it, controlling it. Now, I know I'm going to put some clouds in this, so I'm not worried about what I see. You don't have to have it like a... Um, what do you call it? What's that word? I can't even think of that word. Like it's been airbrushed. It doesn't have to look like it's been airbrushed. Now, for some clouds, to blend clouds, blend clouds is totally different to blending the actual sky colour. So let's just simply keep it simple. We'll put some titanium white. I go to a simple go-to brush, which is a hog bristle fan brush because it's nice and sturdy. So that's what I like to use, and I'll just chisel this on to the brush there. And now we're going to blend. So what we'll do, we'll start here. We'll get something in the middle. Now, we want these clouds not looking like they're flat. We want something to look like it's coming over our head. So the best way to do that in acrylics, stamp it on in a left and right position and then start coming in a V shape over our head now look at the colors it's picking up i'm starting to i'm not brushing it in because i'm stamping it on it's starting to pick up all those blues and purpley colors there okay there we go there is my cloud footprint now grab yourself your blending brush and a cloth now how i blend this acrylic paint onto the background of acrylic paint first i want to just start dancing. Get Watch this drag, just a simple drag. Look at those lines there happening. See how easy that was? Now, for clouds to come over your head, you want the bottoms hard and the tops kind of feathered away. So I want to keep the hard bottoms like if I can, just like that. And then I can, well, look at this blending brush. It's, <laughs> they get, they, some of them last longer than others. And now I'm just going to dance it, and I'm blending that. I'm not blending the living buggery out of it. I'm controlling what I'm blending, okay, because I want to see what I'm blending. Now, the top of it is all going to be really blended to nothing. There we go. I probably should have just picked real life colours, but I just went for something pretty loud here. There's one cloud coming over our head. Now, this brush needs to be washed so I'll give that a quick rinse in my container down here. Wipe it. I'm going to reload it. And like that cloud there, let's put something right in front of it again. Right in front of it, right in front of it. You noticed I did not put retarder in no other paints, only that white craft paint in the beginning. Uh, we'll... Blend the bottom of that, keeping the bottom tight. Oh, I nearly lost it. And then blend that up. See, I'm using the corner of the brush, wiping it as I go. Get it right up there. Let's do a drag out here somewhere. Look at that. You can just drag. I am kind of want to get something leveling this bit here up. It looks a bit unlevel. Okay. Now I've got to wipe the wash the uh, the fan brush because that's the one I'm applying the cloud on there with. So I always need that clean. If I just keep using it, it's going to put dirty white paint onto the canvas. <coughs> Patty Miner, how's that? My blending brushes look now. Time to get new ones. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. I was fine until I come live. Okay, we want to get something here coming over our head. So I'm starting at the bottom. I feel I might have put too much retarder in that white paint. Coming here and right off the painting, just get right off there. See the footprint? I want to show you something. The footprint of that cloud has opened 
bits and bobs in it. It's not just a a line. I've seen people do lines. Now I want to blend the bottom or tap it, just getting those the base lineal horizontal across the painting there, like so. Drag it. And now I'm going to the corner of the brush, the blending brush, the corner. I'm stamping it on, looking at what I'm doing. Yes, I feel I've got a bit of paint on my brush. I'll have a look just to show you. Yeah, I have. Look at that. So with my experience, I know I'll, I'll wipe that and I'll go from here and then tassel this out because if I left that paint on there coming over to here, I would have made a bigger, thicker mush. I want this thicker and lighter out here. You're making different values of the cloud. The more you do them, the more you'll become familiar with what's happening onto your canvas. And then that's when people say you make it look easy. But it's only looking easy because you've done all the practice. When you've got the practice, anything's easy. I mean, we all learn how to drive a car. How many, how many years have you been driving a car? Someone that hasn't driven a car will look at you and go, you make that look so easy, but because you practice. Same principle with painting and your art. Okay, there's some clouds coming over our head, hopefully. Let's put some horizon clouds into this sky and show how we blend those ones, okay? So I'm simply going to use the same fan brush. <coughs> So I'm picking up some more white. Now, with your horizon clouds, let's say we're down here somewhere. We'll get something very long. Keep it long. Is that still wet? Hopefully it is. Let's see. I think this bit might have dried. And I'm going to create the top body of the cloud there. It's mixing with the magenta and the yellow a bit. Trying to keep some... See, I didn't put any windows in it there. I'm going to grab another blending brush because that's getting a bit dirty. I've got an older one here, same one, just different coloured bristles. Now, what I do with these ones is I leave the top, but I blend the bottom down to buggery, blend it down to the horizon. Yeah, it's getting a bit dry here, so I better move along. Keeping the top and blending the bottom down to the horizon. Blend it down, blend it down. Practice your blending. I have had people here, and when I'm side by side with them, they can do it, and I know you can do it. Sometimes it's just hard watching on a video. So now see here how that's kind of just stopped. I'm going to manipulate that and make it happen the way I want. So I've put a little bit of paint there, grabbing my blending brush and smearing it down to buggery. See how I got rid of that transition line that was too obvious? Now that's one cloud there. See how I'm blending this? pushing it around, manipulating it. I've kept the top. Now you want to grab the white paint again and you can sit that down just by putting something in front of it. Look at this. Along there, along there. Let's go all the way along, all the way along. Get this something blend it to blend. Put it there. Get that up there a bit. Leave the top, leave the top. Same again, and bring that down to the bottom of the painting. I'm wiping the brush as I go. Just look what's building up on there. There's so much. If you don't do that, you're going to find that you're making mush. And you don't want your clouds to look like snot. You want them to look like clouds. So just leave the top vibrancy half of that there. I'll tissel that up a bit. And this is how we blend our sky clouds in there. How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking a bit too neat. Oh, well, just disturb that a bit. I don't like that. Just like that. Leave the top there and blend the bottom. See, I'm going a bit vigorous here right now because this has gone a bit rubbery and dried up a bit. So depending how wet or dry your surface is, how violent you are on your canvas with the blending. But in general, I'm not... Um, um, dusting, I call it dusting for fingerprints. 
There we go. I've just put some lines of clouds there, horizon clouds there, just to give you an idea how you can blend them into your painting there. Why not um, grab some more? Let me, where's my white tube of paint? I'm running out of paint here. So I'll come over here. Picking up some more white paint. Now, the, the, the paint's pretty dry, so yeah, it's still a bit wet here. What can I put here? I'll put some cirrus clouds here. So what are cirrus clouds? They're those... I better do a little bit at a time because we might lose them. And you, you don't leave any edge on them. You just simply blend them away. Is my hand in the way? Blend them away so you've got no edge, but keep them uniform within. Don't have brush strokes coming down like this. I'm going to do over here cirrus clouds. I call it cirrus clouds. These are normally way up high in the sky. They're little gap fillers. And you just do them by... So let's look at that. I'll get rid of this one first. Done. Wipe your brush. Over here, let's wipe your brush, pull it together. Get rid of the hard edges and you're just making it like cotton floating in the sky. That's how I blend my cirrus clouds. I just want to get something fluffing through there because I don't like the way that went. There we go. Simple cirrus clouds. It's a very overclouded sky, but I'm just showing you how to blend <coughs> your acrylic paints such as a sky. Most of us are painting a sky in acrylics and a lot of people are having trouble. How do I blend my sky? What time did I start? Does anyone know how long I've been going for? Okay, so now we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to blend water with your acrylic paint. So just have a mouthful of my coffee. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I've got a lot of blending brushes on hand. <laughs> my goodness, where are we? You get there. You get there. I just got to go and wash me, put it on a brush just so as I can um, do the bottom half. I think yesterday I got a good hour out of my battery, so I think I've been half an hour at the moment. Okay. Right, so we'll do the bottom half now. So same principle again. I want to grab the craft paint with the retarder in it, mix it right up. This is just a blending. It's not a painting. I'm just showing you different blending. So don't worry if it doesn't, if it, if it looks a bit weird. A lot of my tutorials have blending tutorials within them anyway, showing you how I blend and everything like that. So we'll get this. Let's get a horizon line somewhere there. There we go. Push this onto the canvas. Now we can make this probably some water here. Let's try some ocean water, I suppose. I don't know, tropical water. And we want it coming onto a sand bank. So how do we get water blending onto the sand? Very easy. I'm going to wipe that brush. Just I've got a rotten, dirty towel here. I'm just going to wipe it. Uh, mine needs 31 minutes, says Scott Cinnamon. I hope I can get longer than that. Uh, where's me turquoise? Here we go. So I'm going to just grab some turquoise down here. I've got to buy more turquoise. And I'll just start at the top and come down to the sand area, okay? So I'll grab this, putting it onto the brush. Now, how we blend this, I'll get it right across me horizon there. That white paint has helped this 
slide across the canvas beautifully. Now I'm going to come down, and if anything, I want to come lighter, lighter into the water area, which is, I mean, not the water, the sand area, which is about there. See how I've done that with the putter on a brush? I'll turn it sideways, and then I'll stroke that just to waterfly it. There we go. Now, I've got to grab another brush just so as I can add the yellow ochre, yellow oxide, where to put that. I'm just going to put more of this onto my palette, so bear with me a minute. I'm just going to simply use the yellow ochre as the, um, the sand colour. I'm not going to go scientifically and get it exact. This is just for the example. I'll get a little bit of water in there because this is quite a thick one. I'm just using a a flat brush which is virtually a bit smaller than me put her on a brush and I'll start at the bottom now using the solid color to there and then I'm massaging it into the white now I'm going to start bringing it into the blue okay I'm bringing it into the blue get a bit more in the brush now I want to put some of this underwater how do you do that so what you do same I did on the sky there you, you stamp the darker bits in where you want underwater and I'll show you how I blend this into the just simply grab your your brush and water fire that so we've got that underwater there we go we can make the bottom a little bit darker if we need be or maybe not up to you but this is left and right that craft paint with the retarder under there is allowing this to happen okay blending uh what do i need okay i need my this brush hang on i'll find out i'll find one of what it looked like what it started out like this brush started out as a flat like that, but over the years it got all munted up and it sort of created itself a miniature head like one of my blending brushes. And it's come in handy for when I do my water. So we've got that there. Let's just find a brush. Uh, I'll grab another fan brush. I'm gonna load that up with some white and simply work out where you want your water. There's the water and the sand. I want some of the sand under the water so you come beyond it. And we'll just sort of dance this along, stamp it on, get a bit more on there, stamp it on, keeping it left and rightish, not too up and down. Okay, stop. Now, I grab this little brush and I'm just going to keep the bottom half hard and then on and off and flicking and pulling that back into the water. Now, hang on a minute, Ian, what are you doing? That is very wet still. I've just done it. I need it to be a bit rubbery because otherwise it's going to, I can push it right down to the white that's underneath. So watch the difference. I'm going to dry that a little bit and make it rubbery. So bear the noise. G'day, Celeste Watson and NH Chicky, some more members of mine. So I'm just going to, slightly dry where I want this to be blended into the water. I want it rubbery. I don't want it wet like I had the sky up there. Okay, so we'll get this going. Because you need a hard edge for the bottom of this to work. Let's see how that's going. I'll try that again. Make sure it's pure white. And, yeah, this it's, it's a bit better now. So there we go. And you need some bits in the middle of it like that keeping the bottom half hard and then breaking the top half of it back into your water wipe it constantly because you don't want it to get too white out there you want it to break up within the water color and this is how i blend my water into the ocean so it looks like the sand has drifted under the water and you can kind of see under there and this is all that foam agitation and stuff that goes on when you see it and when you really develop your craft, you can go your own way and paint water the way you know how to paint it. So that's, yeah, that's that there. So grab a bit more. Let's keep going along. We'll, we'll come along here. We'll come down a bit. I'm stamping it on, keeping the bottom tight, giving something to blend within the middle of it, 
a little bit wavy. Stop, don't go too far. Same again, keeping the bottom tight, pulling this, zigzagging it back, just so it's kind of milky and smoky and blurry at the top half of it. Manipulate the bottom a bit if it's not tight enough, if it's too hairy or whatever. Stroke it. It's got. It's picking up the yellow ochre and bits of the um, blue there to distort the white from being just pure white. Uh, this is just simple lapping water. Let's put a bit here, another little lap here. So we'll come along about there like so. If anything, I'm coming down and straightening out. And see here, I'll drag that all the way along there, pulling just the top, leaving the bottom, just on and off, ticking and flicking and blurring it into the ocean above. Okay, just like that. Look in your monitor if you're using a monitor in through your camera. Have a look at your work. And that's kind of working. You can see what's happening there. See how easy that was to blend in acrylic. You can do it. It all takes practice. Um, so we'll come over this side now just to finish this bottom half off. So I'll come there. And again, I'm coming along. I sort of come down like a big, broad U shape. Look at that. It's just a line. Don't do that. Put some bits and bobs in there like that. You'll know the more you do it. Don't go too far ahead. You want enough to blend back. Wipe your brush so you're not picking up too much white. There we go. There we go. Get rid of that. That's a bit too harsh there. We've blended some simple water. Now what I will do is I'll just put something out here as well, another break, just like so. Simple and effective. It's further out, so it's not going to be so wide. I've come to the edge of this brush just so as I can flick this back. Flick it back, flick it back. Did that work? It's just like a little wave. See how easy that is? See this dark bit there? Let's take advantage of that because with dark bits in water, where is it? We'll put something just on top of that. So we'll try and get a line, a, a blendable line there. There we go. And then flick him out. I don't like that. I'll get rid of that if I can, yeah. Keep the top. I mean, keep the bottom, but you're flicking the top away in that hit, flick, hit, flick. And, and sometimes you've got a little bit on your brush, you're transferring it over there as well. That's what all the practice is all about. That's subtle, but it's there. You don't need a big Mickey Mouse wave coming here that looks fumbly dumbly. I like to teach beginners how to do realistic bullshit looking paintings. I'm not taking fun of the way things are done in the past. It's just I prefer to do it a more bullshitting way. Um, now, some agitation between here, dots like this. Watch what this does. This adds surface to the top of that. Don't go too far. Leaving those dots there but distorting them. So it looks like a lot of foam sitting on top of that water. The you wouldn't do this all the way out there because it's far away. This is just what your eye can see. As you're closer to something, you're starting to look at the top of things. But the further away you are, you only see the side of it. Did you see what that done there? Where can we take advantage of some of that? Let's say between here, just to show you how I'm blending these little details. I'm lightly touching it lightly touching it look at that it looks freckly and dumb doesn't it let's turn it into some magic so soften the edges but leaving them there and still doing it the left and right motion because that's the way water looks on the horizon line there i'll have a look in my monitor in a minute just to see how this is um looking now that's kind of looking like your foam you know, the, the bits of foam just sitting on the top. Now, see here, we can take advantage, get yourself a script liner. Those of you who don't know what a script liner is, it's just a little thin brush. 
and um, grab yourself. I'm just going to. I don't. I'm just going to make a darker version of some of that yellow ochre. So I'll just grab some of that magenta there and just dingleberry that into it, like so. It's probably not the right vibe, but it'll do for now. And get your brush very inky. Twist it to the point. And to get these bits to look real, you just want the slightest watch. Very gingerly look for those bits there and touch them down onto the sand there. Break it up. Don't do a solid whole line under it and make it look cartoony. Try and get the vibe of it right. Practice the vibe of lines when if you've got to do some lines in there. And that has just sat that down on the water. Uh, I'll do a bit here. My hands are very shaky. I don't have very steady hands. Twist your brush. Let it look all nature fireable. You can probably drag a bit of this like so if you want, just to blend it through to that bottom colour. Just like that. Sometimes less is more. This is not a bad wave looking picture, I suppose, now you look at it. But nine times out of ten, we'll go and do a whopping big wave. I've done big waves, but sometimes you just need these subtle things because it's what we see in real life. How's that looking? Yes, that's a bit dumb there. This here can do with a little bit of um, sitting down. So we'll just sit some of this down. Just a darker version, getting under there, and work out the best way. Probably get little bits tucked in there. And it's just sat it down. Where's the time on the clock? Oh, everything's in front of the clock. There we go. Thank you, Paddy Miner. Paddy Miner, Chicky, Celeste Watson, Barry Radburn, all members of mine. Now, see... See out here, another thing you can take advantage of. It's all part of blending, but it's um, you we can grab the actual turquoise on its own with nothing in it and use that just to... Where are we? I, I, I need my Malcolm stick, which is one of these things with a cork on it. It's a Mal stick, but I, I give everything a name. I don't know why. I'll lean that across there. And just under here, we can put the slightest darker value under here of that watercolour just to give that some fold and depth and realisticness to it. Where are we? A little bit here. And you'll see the difference that this has just done. Now, I'm going to do some dry blending. Hopefully, we've got enough time. I'll do some dry blending. We've done mostly wet at the top, sort of spongy, rubbery type at the bottom here that's not so wet. And now I'm going to do dry blending in um, some acrylics for you. Hopefully, we get enough time. And you can see what that's done to the water there. It's just added some realisticness. Yeah, that'll do. That will do. I'll put that in there. So, okay, over here, I'm just going to give this corner here a dry so it's dry so I can do some dry blending. 45 minutes. Thank you, Scott. All right, that's... That's pretty dry, I hope. Pretty dry. Uh, I'm just going to also put this in my Facebook uh, open new tab. I've got to put a, a link in my Facebook so people there can watch it as well. Uh, paste. There we go. I've, I forgot. I've just put it in my art group page, but now it's in the um, it's in the My page as well. Okay, so let's do some dry blending. Scott Cinnamon, nice tutorial. Good job on the live broadcast. Thank you very much, Scott, for your super chat donation. I'm much appreciated. Now, my go-to for trees, I love doing filbert trees because I use a filbert brush. Let's just simply grab some forest green for this tutorial's sake. And 
we'll put some of that down there forest green and some simple cad yellow the colors are not gonna they're not live real colors so i'm just going to use something ink your paint up a bit let's get some of this green on the brush and then just to turn the lights on because it is a bit dark i want to put a little bit of the cadmium yellow medium in there just so we can see it there we go there we go now dry blending I'm just simply going to do a row of something out here. You don't normally get a reflection in the ocean like you do in a lake. So, But let's just imagine this part's a lake. I can't stop and then start a whole lake scene. So we'll just, on the horizon line, I'm going to stamp it on, right? Stamp it on where I want. I'm coming along here. Now what I'm doing, I'm going up and down the horizon line, but I'm gradually coming wider, okay? What that does is gives the illusion that those row of trees are going that way instead of looking straight across. Now I'm going to get the tops of them done. So you need it inky enough just to get the tops of our filbert trees going. So you always have the outside edge higher than coming into the middle, and then we'll you can see that I'm leaving a lot of windows in this, and then we will darken this bit here up like so. I'll just do it now so you get a vibe of what I'm doing. There we go, get something umbrellaing out there. Now it's important when you do trees and shrubs like this, uh, you need the darks in there. There's probably not a lot of dark in this. I'm going to grab the camera a little bit over there a bit more just so you can see. So I'm, I'm pretty much getting this along here. And I'm going to show you how I dry blend the reflections into the water. It's very easy to do. The, the first time beginner can do this. It's just knowing what to do. And then it's that easy. So now what I've done, everything's still wet of, of, of that green. I'm just going to damp that on and pull it down. Pull it down into the water there. Stamp it on and pull it down straightly. Now, as I get to the outside edge here, it's going to be a lot smaller because we're smaller out there. So pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. And this is how you can do some dry blending. Like the oil artist, theirs is wet. They pull it down and it looks nice and smeared and wet. But we can still do that with acrylic paints, just by doing it this way. So what I'll do, I'll just put something right up here a bit high, just so as I can indicate that into the water there's reflection. See, so we've broken up that even line, we've made it more interesting, okay? Now what you simply do is see where the, the land, the trees are meeting the water. We simply need that a bit darker. That can be dried. So I'm going to dry that real quickly. So I'll just quickly dry that. Dry it, dry it, dry it. Come on, you mongrel. Just grab a dark colour. You can, you can use black if you want, but I so happen to have some perylene green here, which is an incredibly dark green. So I'm just going to quickly wash that same filbert brush, wipe it, pick up some of the perylene green, just so as I can get, watch what this does. This is great when you paint stuff like this on lakes. Uh, we want this in the middle, or well, not too much, wipe it off in the middle and stamp it up through your trees. Start at the top half and then you can drag little bits down into the water, just like that. There we go. This just adds a lot more realistic vibe to your, to your artwork. And it's just like dry blending. You're putting it on, but as it's on, you're getting the opportunity to smear it. Let's call it smearing because a lot of us know what smear means. Okay, so we're just putting it on and smearing it all the way along there. Sometimes you might do a nice picture of a tree or rocks or something, but something's a bit missing. It's the darker values. You need those dark values in the right spot. And once you've worked them out, things come to life. 
and it turns your art into absolute bullshit. Okay, that might look a bit funny, but when you put your highlights on there, can I adjust this? Yes, I can. While I'm live, you can cancel yours. No, I don't want to cancel the USB streaming. Okay, that's done. Now what I'm going to simply do just to highlight that, I'll use the same brush, but that cadmium yellow light that I had down here, I want to grab some of that now um, and just make a lighter value just so you can see how we'll highlight those trees and blend the reflections into the water. So we got that a little bit of water in there to make it inky. Okay, got some Canadians in the room. Let's see if this is bright enough. I feel I wanted a bit more yellow. It's not yellow green enough. So I'm really adding some more yellow now, making it really yellowy green. That'll do. Now, I just want to kind of, on the top half, I'm stamping this on. That black that I put, it's important that I dribble over that a little bit. Dribble over it. There's the black bit, and I'm dribbling over it. Okay, you want to dribble over it to sink that black bit right back in the guts of your painting. You need it sunk right back. Things have got to get right in there. All right, so see what I'm doing here? Dribble that over the black there. We can take our time because it's all dry blending this. Put some of that there. This is just simple stamping brush strokes for some trees. Beginners can do this with their eyes shut. It's just knowing how to do it, and it's fantastic. It's great fun, great fun, and it's great therapy as well. Art is a wonderful therapy. Okay, there we go. We've dribbled it over the black. Now we simply get this into the... Stamp it on and drag it down. Stamp it on and drag it down. Like I said, this should be on a lake, not the ocean, because you don't get reflections like this in the ocean. So if there's any detail police out there telling me I've done the wrong colours and that, well, you need to pick up some rocks and go and roll them. Because this is just a tutorial showing beginners how they can blend in acrylic, wet, dry and rubbery style. Hopefully this is working all right. I'll have a look in the monitor. Yeah, that's kind of... Just sort of drag it. That's it. Get them straight. See, I've got some crookedy ones there. But there we go. That's some pretty much dry blending there. Okay. Um, see here what I said about dribbling. Oh, where is it? That bit right there. You want that. Right over the black there. Here we go. Look at that. That's, it looks wet, but it's not wet. It's blended and it's done dry. Okay. Now, another, one more quick, simple thing, if I can get the time. Danette Smith. G'day, Danette Smith, another member of mine. Welcome to the live chat there all my members get shout outs when i see their names there thank you very much danette smith for your super chat donation hugs and kisses to you thank you now i'm gonna is that paint dry uh, grab some more white i'm just going to put a bit of a glare here how do we get a glare? So I'll use a smaller brush. Where did my little scrumbler go? I'll use that little scrumbler one. Work out what brush does good things and what does not do good things. I'm going to use my little scrumbling brush. I just call it a scrumbling brush. Now, I've just washed it in water and it's very wet still, so I don't want it wet. I want it dry, rubbery dry. I want to pick up some paint and wear it away because I just want some inkling... Let's just say we've got, we'll go about here. This paint's probably too dry now. So I'll get the concentration there. It could be just a glare of the moon out there. Now I'm going to simply wipe this brush, wipe the living buggery out of it. 
Okay, and I'll see if I can sit that down the edges of this into that color there. See why I picked up this little brush? The hairs are short, so they're doing less bending and they're more prone to push the paint and manipulate it. See here where I want it to go. If I had a longer haired brush, I'll be flipping and tripping and fumbling. So the shorter the hairs, the more control you got over pushing. Now, see, I was that was pretty much dry there. It's rubbery and dry, very rubbery and close to dry. But as I able to get that glare there, that's what I wanted. Now, grab yourself a, um, what do we got? Um, let's try this flat brush. This flat brush. I'll get it wet. Pick up that white. Oh, I've used it all up. Let's grab some more white. My water is probably dry, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. It's a tutorial. You've got to see it. If I make a mistake, well, then you see it all. So I'm picking up some of this onto there. Now, I need Malcolm again, my mouse stick, just so I can lean. Uh, so I've used a flat brush because what I want to do, I want to get that glare. So you remember how I put this stuff on here? Same principle. We're putting the glare out here. Down here is, that's my peripheral vision. I've got a dot down there. And we want to glare this up now. Dance along, keeping it straight. Don't come on an angle. I've seen people have their shoreline here and they put the thing on an angle. Don't do that. Now, I've done so far there. What I need to do is just wipe that and then, like I did with the other one, push it out here and there. Get rid of those edges. Just make it look blended into the water there. It might pick up some of the blue, which is good because you don't want a pure white. But I'm just trying to rush this along to get this example going for you. Leave some ribbons of untouched See, I'm going to leave bits of ribbons of it there that aren't touched and just left and right, dance it on, play with it. Come out here a bit more. Wipe your brush, flat brush, wipe it flatly so as you can flatly smear that out in a controlled way. That's dry, very dry, rubbery water there, but I'm able to blend this so it's not just looking like it's sitting on top of it. It looks like it's part of the painting, if you know what I mean. And if you feel you've done some too much out somewhere here, just simply grab that watercolour. Now, see here as we get closer, we can put some of this crispiness right on top of these waves here. Watch. I'm looking in the monitor to see where I can go. Yes, I could see. I could see there. Bits of it really crisping out here. Crispering up, and I think this can probably do it. How's that? We've done some glistening, crisping sunlight on that water there. It's a beautiful sunny day, but we've got a weird sunny sky in the sky there, but that's okay. It's a tutorial. All right, so I'll just put Malcolm back down on his caddy over there. Let's have a look at that with our blending. So we've got these colours blended, we've got the clouds blended, we've got the water blended onto the sand, we've got the sand looking like it's going under the water, we've got some trees there blended into the reflection. What we can do is just grab any sort of brush. I'm just going to grab this one. I'll pick up some white paint and then I'm just simply going to wipe most of it off I'll grab me bullshit stick just so as I can get some smear, sit those reflections down. So come across the water, come across both subjects. Oh, not much on there. I'll rub too much off. <laughs> okay, let's go again. There we go. And we're just simply going to sink our reflections down in the water there. This is kind of like over this side of the ocean is like a lake. Oh, that's too much. And over the other side's like the ocean. 
So we've sunk those reflections down. I'm just going to pick up some of that turquoise there and hopefully I can get rid of that big bright line that I put there. See how easy it is to fix a mistake up? If I can get a bit more, it's trying to dry on me. Oh, too dark, whiten that up a bit. Doesn't matter, we'll have a dark band out there, shadows and stuff. I've just wet the brush, but I think I've wet it too much. There we go. Get rid of that stick. Oh, the camera's not really picking it up, but I've put a film of water over that. It's sunken those reflections down. Okay, what's um, Marilyn Lynch? I better show her comment there. Lots of bullshit. I'm loving it. Yeah, you need a lot of bullshit. Why I say bullshit, it's just a bigger way of saying wow. So there we go. I'll, I'll change the thumbnail on this video. Uh, I'll, where did my little... Um, do Valaki go? We'll put, uh, we'll get some dark colour here just so I can autograph it. Down here in the bottom right, I suppose. And I want to thank everybody who supports my content on YouTube and Patreon. It's much appreciated. Check out the links in the description below. I have plenty of links there. See what's in my cupboard. And there's a lot of links there that'll probably help you out. Okay, get up here. Signatures are funny, eh? Sometimes they go so well and sometimes they just look rubbish. Okay. Knows you don't. I always put Steve's little footprint there. And we'll whack a frame on that, see how it looks within a frame. It's not a proper painting, but it's just a demo. But still, we'll put a frame on it and see how she looks. There you go, you can get a vibe, it's a weird looking sky, but uh, we've done a lot of blending in acrylic paints, and I know if you're beginning and you just started and you're practicing, I know you can do it. All right, I'll come back over here and just... Where are we? Where are we? I've got to turn some different lights on and off now. So where are we? I'll turn this one off. I'll turn that one on. And I'll turn that one off and my other light on so you can see a little bit better. There we go. That's what I normally do when I'm editing. All right. Hope you like that exercise. That's just how I blend. There's so many ways you can teach, but that's all I can throw up in the in this. In the, I had an hour. I thought, you know what? I'll quickly go live and do this demo on how to blend in acrylics. Thank you, Barry. Uh, you're going to whack a frame on it. Yes, I did whack a frame on it. Uh, so thank you very much. And be, just remember, if you like what I'm doing on my channel, you can be sure to tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye. Good luck. And good on you. Okay, Lois Levonsky, love it. Gisela, beautiful. Jody Blewett, Blue, Blue it. Blue it. uh, Gisela P. Marilyn Lynch, Danette Smith, thank you for joining the show. I've got a bit of a mess to clean up now, but that's all part of art, isn't it? That can go in there, that can go in there. Is that one dirty? Yeah, that can go in there. So I've finished the video now. This is just end roll, so if you want to hang around and watch what I do. The, the battery's probably going to run out whenever. I don't know, but I've got at least... Where's my paint in front of the clock? I've got at least a good hour and a bit out of that battery, so I've got to remember when I'm going to go live to charge my battery up. Last Friday night live, I got my camera ready and go, holy hell, I didn't charge the camera. I've had 10 minutes to go, so I quickly charged it. Luckily, it was enough in there to add some extra to be enough. Uh, Danette Smith, good on you. Love the tutorial. Learned a lot. Good to hear, Susan Chambers. Good to hear, Chicky. All right. Um, I'm going to turn this camera off now and um, get cleaning up. Uh, where are we? Where is everything? I've got to go back to this one now. Uru from The Guru.